lives until I found this photo from Grandmere State Park. This is from Joshua Nowicki. And what you're seeing here is a mirage, is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan Shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake that we're actually seeing a mirage, a mirage of the Chicago skyline. Very interesting. Here's what's happening. This is a, a good example of a superior mirage. So Joshua was on the Lake Michigan shore. He was looking towards the west, and Chicago's beyond the horizon. Should not be able to see it. However, with the right conditions, we have an inversion. We have cold air near the cold lake water and some relatively warmer air above it. This will bend the image of that uh, skyline back towards the viewer. And so typically we would not be able to see this. This image would be viewable from much, much higher in the sky up in space. But instead, we're able to see it on the Lake Michigan shore. I want to be clear. I am willing to work with anybody. Republicans, Democrats, independents, libertarians, greens, anybody. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Let me tell you something. If some of these folks were around when Columbus set sail, Now, the, here, here's, here's the, uh, they, 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 you know, that, that's, they, they want to, they, 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 they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. <laughs> if I say that the world is round and someone else says it's flat, That's worth reporting, but you might also want to report on a bunch of scientific evidence that seems to support the notion that the world is round. is getting ready to launch. My name is Kelly Smith, and I work on navigation and guidance for Orion. Orion is NASA's next generation spacecraft. Built with versatility in mind, it can take astronauts deeper into space than we've ever gone before, to an asteroid, or even onto Mars. For these missions, Orion has to be one tough spacecraft, withstanding high speeds, searing temperatures, and extreme radiation. Before we can send astronauts into space on Orion, we have to test all of its systems. And there's only one way to know if we got it right. Fly it in space. For Orion's first flight, no astronauts will be aboard. The spacecraft is loaded with sensors to record and measure all aspects of the flight in every detail. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. Radiation like this could harm the guidance systems, onboard computers, or other electronics on Orion. Naturally, we have to pass through this danger zone twice, once up and once back. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. Then in 2002, Blue Marble 2.0, NASA's Rob Simmon made this. And it had wide appeal too. For example, it ended up as the default background on the iPhone. I didn't even know until I bought an iPhone um, and turned it on and kind of did a little happy dance. Simmons' job is... It's primarily taking data and making pictures out of it. That's what this is. A composite of data sets from several different instruments translated into a picture. 
the to us the really cool thing was the data set. Up until that point, there was no realistic color map of the globe anywhere. So the land layer here comes from the moderate resolution imaging spectral radiometer aboard Terra. And the tricky part here was the weather. So we actually had to take clouds out. They stashed the clouds for later, went onto the ocean. That came from an instrument that measures phytoplankton in the sea. Where it was low, I colored it dark blue because they're low mostly in mid-oceans. And then where it was a little bit higher, it was like a little bit brighter green. Then add the clouds back in. There's a small problem with it because there's a very slight gap in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Then? There was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection of sunlight off of water. Those are the pieces, but you can't just slap them all together. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat, or the clouds are sort of too see-through. So I just take Command Z a lot. There's artistry to creating the world. It, what I imagine it to be. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an astronaut. <laughs> I've never been to space. But I've looked at these images over and over again trying to sort of get the essence of it. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, has to be. Newton said that if an object falls, it's because there's a mysterious force called gravity pulling it down. But you know, Isaac Newton himself was not satisfied by that. Objects move because they're pushed, not pulled. So what is pushing this? Newton didn't know. So Newton simply threw his hands up and said, I don't know, and said, I don't know. So I'm going to invent something called gravitational pull. What is gravity? We have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> wow. No, here's the difference. We can describe gravity. Okay. We can say what it does to other things. We can, we can measure it, predict with it. But when you start asking, like, what it is, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. A science emergency defense program initiated. Is everything okay? No, Neil, everything is not okay. This BOB BS about the Earth being flat is getting out of control. Can you please help us? All right, ho hold my sandwich. Oh, sure. Okay, okay, sorry. Here, you take that. Here, here. You want to go? Oh. All right, listen, B.O.B., once and for all. The Earth looks flat because, one, you're not far enough away at your size. Two, your, your size isn't large enough relative to Earth to notice any curvature at all. It's a fundamental fact of calculus and non-Euclidean geometry. Small sections of large curved surfaces will always look flat to little creatures that crawl upon it. But this... Of course, in a free society, you can and should think whatever you want. And if you want to think the world is flat, go right ahead. But if you think the world is flat and you have influence over others, as would successful rappers or even presidential candidates, then being wrong becomes being harmful to the health, the wealth, and the security of our citizenry. So that's right, B.O.B., when you stand on the shoulders of those who came before, you might just see far enough to realize the Earth isn't flat. And by the way, this is called gravity. It's called gravity. So, uh, so, 
so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it kind of flattens out. Yeah. It gets wider in the middle. And So Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere. It's, an, it's oblate. And officially it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way. It's like pear-shaped. Yeah. It's like pear-shaped. Yeah. So, it turns out the pear-shapedness is bigger than the height of Mount Everest above sea level. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be.